In 2021, IEA's PEARLS, Progress in International Reading Literacy Study, well established as the de facto worldwide standard for monitoring reading comprehension achievement at the primary school level, marked its 20th year. PEARLS 2021 provides data on trends in comparative reading achievement across countries over two decades. PEARLS 2021 offers the PEARLS assessment of literary and informational reading in a digital format, presenting reading passages and items as an engaging and visually attractive experience that motivates students and increases operational efficiency. With PEARLS all electronic format, countries can administer the full PEARLS reading assessment, PEARLS literary and informational, as well as the ePEARLS online informational as one seamless, digitally-based endeavor. To assess students' achievement in online reading, IEA's TIMS and PEARLS International Study Center at Boston College created ePEARLS to see how well students can gather information from the internet. In ePEARLS tasks, a teacher avatar guides students through a series of web pages about a social studies or science topic asking questions that assess their reading comprehension. Similar to printed texts, web pages can present information in various forms, such as photos, illustrations, graphs, charts, tables, maps, and timelines. However, online text presentations typically integrate dynamic elements for visual interest or illustration. Videos and audio clips, animated graphics, pop-up windows with information that only appears by clicking, hovering above or rolling over it, and a variety of code-based features, such as information that appears and disappears, revolves, or changes color. In the Oceans task, students read and answer questions about why oceans are important, ocean life and habitats, and why oceans are threatened. Here, the teacher avatar, Mr. Webster, begins the task by asking students to use Google to search the internet. In question one, Mr. Webster asks students to click on the link that is most likely to explain why oceans are important. The student should click on the fourth link, Benefits of the World's Oceans. Please note that no matter what link they choose, students are brought to the correct web page. The Benefits homepage has two icons for Home and Interview, an advertisement for diving lessons, as well as text and graphics about the major benefits of the oceans, air, water, and food. In question two, students are asked why the plants in the ocean are important for life on Earth. Based on the caption under The Air We Breathe, students should choose the first option, that plants provide oxygen. The text at the bottom of the web page explains that the oceans are connected and provides a link to a map of Earth showing this. To guide the students, Mr. Webster asks them to click on the link to take a closer look. The map shows Earth's continents and how they're surrounded by the five oceans. In question three, Mr. Webster asks, why can what happens in one ocean affect other oceans? Students should select, all oceans are connected. Next, to meet an expert about oceans, Mr. Webster asks students to click on the interview icon. The first page of An Interview with Ocean Scientist Sylvia Earle describes her background and asks her how she first became interested in the ocean and what she had to learn to do her job. For assistance with technical terms, students could click on Scuba Dive. Question 4 asks students why Sylvia Earle was chosen for an interview, with the last option being the correct answer. She has spent her entire life studying oceans. Once students have answered the question, Mr. Webster directs them to click on the red arrow icon to read the rest of the interview. Page two of the interview asks about Sylvia's recent explorations, why she thinks oceans are important, and if she worries about the future of the oceans. There is a link that defines a submersible and a picture of Sylvia in the deep worker submersible. In question five, Mr. Webster asks students why deep worker is useful to underwater explorers. Students are required to type an answer, such as, it can go deeper than a scuba diver. Question six asks students why Sylvia thinks the oceans are important, with the answer being, they provide our drinking water, the first option. Mr. Webster concludes study of the benefits website by introducing the concept of habitats and explaining what they are. 
Students are shown a list of Google search results, and in question seven, Mr. Webster asks them to click on the link that is most likely to include information about different habitats in the ocean. The student should click on the second link, Ocean Life and Habitats. Again, no matter what link they choose, students are brought to the correct web page. The Ocean Life and Habitats webpage has three icons, Home, Coral Reefs, and Mariana Trench. The text describes the three major defining features of ocean habitats, showing a graphic representation of ocean life at various depths, and has an advertisement for a travel agency. In question eight, Mr. Webster asks students to use the defining features of ocean habitats to give two ways that ocean habitats can be different, for example, distance from the shore and depth of the ocean. Question nine asks students why plants are found in the top layer of the ocean, and students should explain that this is where there is enough sunlight. Mr. Webster then directs students to click on Coral Reefs. Mr. Webster tells students to watch the video about life in a coral reef and click close when finished. Question 10 asks students to use all the information on the web page to describe two things about coral reef habitats. For example, they are near shorelines, or coral is an animal and can grow. Question 11 asks students how pollution affects fish that live in coral reefs. Students should observe that the fish will lose their habitat, die, or have no place to live. Mr. Webster then directs students to click on Mariana Trench to study another kind of ocean habitat. Question 12 asks students what the Mount Everest animation shows about the Mariana Trench. Students need to play the video and respond that the trench is deeper than Earth's tallest mountain. Next, Mr. Webster directs students to click on the arrow to learn about weird fish that live in the deepest part of the ocean. In question 13, Mr. Webster asks students to use the text and picture to give two reasons why the deep sea dragonfish is weird. For example, it glows and has big teeth. If students choose to click on deep sea hatchet fish, they can. However, Mr. Webster directs them to move on to the topic of how plastic trash is endangering the oceans. Students are shown a list of Google search results, and Mr. Webster asks them to click on the link that is most likely to include information about ocean pollution from plastic. Question 14. The student should click on the third link, plastic in the ocean. Again, no matter what link they choose, students are brought to the correct web page. The plastic in the ocean web page has text describing the huge amount of plastic trash floating in the oceans. The plastic breaks down into tiny poisonous pieces that are eaten by fish, which then are eaten by people. There also is a picture of the trash, an icon entitled, What Can We Do?, and an advertisement for art made of plastic. Question 15 asks students to evaluate how a statement about a plastic bag at the bottom of the Mariana Trench supports the idea of trash everywhere in the ocean. Students should have selected the fourth option, plastic bags have reached such a remote place. Question 16 asks students why the author included the sentence about garbage in the ocean that cannot be seen. The answer is the second option, to emphasize the hidden danger. For the final web page, Mr. Webster directs students to click on What Can We Do? The first paragraph of the What Can We Do? webpage describes technical solutions to ocean pollution by recycling or repurposing the plastic in the oceans. The second paragraph gives some ways individuals can reduce the amount of plastic in the oceans by using fewer plastic products, recycling plastic, and picking up trash when they see it. Question 17 asks students one way that technology can reduce the amount of plastic in the ocean, such as machines recycling the plastic. As the final question, question 18, students are asked whether they think one person can make a difference in protecting the oceans and to give two reasons supporting their choice based on what they've read. Students could check yes and give examples from this webpage, or students that checked no could refer to the overwhelming scale of the problem as described on earlier webpages. To conclude, Mr. Webster congratulates students and explains how they can review their work and make changes as necessary and then log out.